Okay, beautiful. So um, my name is Ralf Kube. I'm a research physicist at the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, and I will talk a little bit about machine learning in fusion energy sciences. <clears throat> so when I was asked to do this presentation, um, I really had to go back and think what I was going to present because um, I certainly am a machine learning practitioner in fusion energy sciences, but it is quite a large field. <clears throat> Um, so it came to my mind that there will be a machine learning mini conference at this year's American Physical Society uh, Division of Plasma Physics meeting, and this is quite a big meeting. So there will be four sessions, three oral sessions, and one poster session with over 71 submitted abstracts. <clears throat> so um, to illustrate the, uh, the breadth of the field, I took all the abstracts from that meeting and generated a word cloud. And, uh, here uh, stripping away all filler words like and with etc the <clears throat> uh, how large a word appears in this plot gives you some sense of the relative uh, of the frequency these words appear so uh, first let me say that fusion energy sciences can be roughly uh, uh, separated into uh, magnetic confinement and inertial confinement fusion um, and this mini conference covers both so um, this word cloud gives you uh, I hope this word cloud gives you an overview over the breadth of modalities where uh, machine learning is used in uh, fusion. Um, certainly neural network appears very large. Uh, that reflects the fact that most machine learning practitioners in uh, fusion energy sciences do deep learning in all kinds of var uh, varieties that can be multi-layer perceptrons. You see the phrase convolutional neural network uh, popping up, you see deep neural network. There are some people who do time series modeling with uh, recurrent neural network, <clears throat> uh, neural networks. Um, and then more of coming from the uh, from the physics side, you uh, see the big uh, phrase simulation, and uh, that reflects the uh, the uh, the research thrust in the field to uh, replace expensive numerical simulations with machine learned surrogate models. That's uh, certainly an aspect many people look into. Um, and then you see many smaller <clears throat> uh, you see uh, many smaller uh, terms. For example, anomalous transport coefficients, beam emission spectroscopy, disruption prediction inner shell target and those are all terms that reflect uh, the different uh, physics modalities so to say that come uh, that that are important from the uh, <clears throat> uh, from the exper uh, from the experiments um, and you also see some uh, smaller words for example gaussian process regression um, that's certainly uh, a very popular technique uh, not deep learning but there are certainly mach machine learning practitioners in the fusion energy sciences who uh, use this technique okay um, i'm personally working on magnetic confinement fusion. Uh, so I thought I, uh, coming from the experimental side, uh, I'm going, I thought I uh, motivate a little bit what kind of data we are working with, because when you say machine learning, you certainly look at the data sources. So um, here on the top left, you see a, a tokamak, a machine for use for uh, <clears throat> magnetic confinement fusion. And here, I'm, uh, this is an illustration of the uh, upcoming Spark tokamak, one of three tokamaks that is currently under construction in the US. And then in the top right, um, I just took some random uh, visualizations of data that are measured in uh, plasma discharges. <clears throat> and um, as you can see, all these five plots look nothing alike. And that is because the data, we, uh, the measurement data we uh, sample in fusion plasma varies by a lot. Um, it can, <clears throat> um, there are different uh, diagnostics, which are all uh, sensitive to different physics. And uh, for example, we have magnetic fluctuations here shown a spectrogram. We have, uh, <clears throat> there are um, uh, diagnostics and sort that are sensitive to electromagnetic radiation in all kinds of the spectrum. For example, visible light, um, <clears throat> uh, infrared, which uh, targets the material walls cyclotron radiation, which is kind of micrometer uh, range. And uh, there are also, for example, diagnostics that are based on uh, particle flux. So um, yeah, a broad array of diagnostics is used to uh, sample the uh, uh, various aspects of the plasma and we use those to try and reconstruct the plasma state. Now, um, these diagnostics um, also have different outputs. Some diagnostics just give uh, a zero, uh, zero dimensional quantity, for example, a pressure sensor. 
some diagnostics give us one-dimensional uh, data, which would be of profile, or two-dimensional data. And in addition, many of these uh, diagnostics, either due to uh, the, the physics they are sensitive to or uh, electronic limitations, will sample on different uh, time scales. <clears throat> so on the plot on the lower right here, uh, this kind of illustrates what kind of length and time scales we are dealing with in uh, fusion plasmas. Time scales uh, range from uh, less than nanoseconds for uh, wave physics to uh, seconds for uh, macroscopic transport. And the length scales, are so that's, that's over 10 orders of magnitude on the x-axis. And then on the y-axis, we have <clears throat> uh, time scale uh, differences between seconds and 10 to the minus seconds. So it's a, a lot of variability. And uh, from this variability uh, comes also the fact that machine learning tasks uh, vary a lot in uh, fusion plasmas. So um, let me just quickly illustrate three kind of machine learning uh, research topics that are popular at uh, PPTL and uh, uh, since we are associated with Princeton, also at Princeton University. Um, on the left, <clears throat> um, you see an illustration uh, uh, that's supposed to be a plasma control. And here, uh, and that is exactly what the name says. If we have a discharge, we have a real-time uh, feedback system uh, that tries to steer the plasma away from unstable configurations, kind of, kind of uh, just keep it confined. And there are some, uh, there are some, uh, there are some research going on how machine learning can be used to uh, optimize the feedback system <clears throat> so that the plasma uh, plasma control system is able to operate more efficiently, keep keep the plasma better on track. Um, another thrust of research that uh, PPPL is heavily involved in is machine learning for uh, fusion simulations. Um, fusion simulations come in all uh, sizes, and please excuse me. <clears throat> and um, the, uh, we, are, we are running some simulations on <clears throat> um, yeah, the, uh, the big computers like Cori and uh, Daddy, yeah, that's what it is. Daddy has to talk to his friends. I'm sorry, I'm having a daycare situation today. Um, <laughs> okay, um, right. So we, we, uh, we have the XGC code, which is very compute intensive. And um, in preparation for running more physically accurate uh, models, we would like to replace some compute intensive parts of the codes with machine learn, uh, with machine learn surrogate models. Um, another thrust of research we are involved in is disruption detection. Uh, disruption in a fusion plasma is a mode uh, that, <clears throat> that is... Uh, Can you wait a little bit? Um, that is a sudden termination of the uh, of the discharge, <clears throat> um, which uh, can damage the plasma vessel walls, which we were, which is very costly. So we would like to uh, have a system that uh, precautiously terminates the discharge when it is uh, detected that the plasma evolves into the state. So um, when it comes to using NERSC infrastructures, um, NERSC provides a great infrastructure and uh, many of the machine learning practitioners I've talked to uh, use, uh, use the infrastructure and are very happy with it. Um, some things we are very happy with is that TensorFlow and PyTorch modules are readily available also in uh, modern versions. Um, and a typical job for machine learning practitioners are uh, smallish problems that don't require much compute time. So for this, we uh, rely heavily on Jupyter Notebook and we really appreciate the GPU support we have in there. Um, five minutes to go. Five minutes, okay. Um, for logging, people use uh, TensorBoard and for larger jobs, uh, I know people use Raytune, Horovod, uh, Cray HPO and other tools that are available at uh, NERSC. <clears throat> um, some bottlenecks I personally have experienced were that when we train uh, large training jobs, which require multiple terabytes of data, um, data loading becomes a, a bottleneck. And uh, we have inspected this with uh, debuggers uh, such as uh, Tau. Um, and then, um, so we, we are actually very happy with the software that is provided. Um, so I'm actually going to start wrapping up my talk now and talk about uh, some new contenders. 
Um, and there are the ideas that, uh, that, that is basically uh, using automatic differentiation in combination with uh, uh, scientific simulation. Um, <clears throat> some, uh, that, that paradigm is also known under programming 2.0. And there the idea is basically to use automatic differentiation to make arbitrary code amenable to gradient-based optimization, not only uh, neural networks, for example. So um, there are two tools that uh, I, I gather are popular among uh, machine learning practitioners, and those are Julia and uh, Jax. So Julia is a language that is uh, developed from the scratch. It's very young. Um, automatic differentiation is a first class citizen, and the entire language is just in time compiled, so it runs very fast. And uh, Jax is uh, used in conjunction with Python. Um, it can differentiate native Python and NumPy and is also just in time compiled. But um, right now, those uh, languages are uh, only used for a, a very, a, at a very experimental stage and not at the production stage. And uh, it is still un unclear how uh, fusion energy sciences will incorporate this automatic differentiation with traditional HPC simulations. And then um, another trend I would just uh, like to shortly bring up here is that um, <clears throat> uh, we, um, fusion will most likely, uh, will, with the next generation of fusion experiments, generate very large uh, data sets. We are talking about crossing petabytes of data per day. And it is, uh, and we are looking into how machine learning can be used uh, with, the, with these kinds of data sets. Um, so some technologies we are I have discussed internally with colleagues are um, first uh, cust custom machine learning hardware, and this goes under the name uh, wafer scale engines. Uh, Cerebras recently released uh, one of these. Um, it's basically chips designed for machine learning tasks, specialized hardware, and combine them into um, <clears throat> chips that are like physically large, hence the name wafer scale engines. Uh, Tesla also talked about this when they talked about their uh, do uh, dojo cluster. And um, it's, it's basically tensor processing units, what, what they're doing from uh, which uh, Google released, I think in 2017, but those I believe will be commercially available. Um, also in conjunction with the uh, big data um, age of fusion, <laughs> if you so will, um, is uh, a move uh, towards uh, uh, transformer uh, neural networks. And uh, those, uh, th those are uh, by design more general, but require more data to, uh, <clears throat> to, uh, to, to work on the task. So um, there are some uh, research going on how to use these networks for uh, fusion energy right now. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I'm finished. Uh, great timing. In that case, uh, we have uh, one minute left if anybody has a, a question to ask. I guess I can ask a question. Um, so thanks, Ralph, for the nice uh, shout out of the uh, machine learning software. But is is there anything uh, uh, you feel is missing from the stack for? Um, uh, actually, no. And um, I, I have I, uh, to the colleagues I talked in preparation for this talk. I really haven't heard anything the, anything that they feel is missing or would really increase their productivity when they do machine learning at NERSC. So I get the impression that uh, the facilities are quite uh, yeah, where, the, where they need to be right now. Well, we'll see later uh, when, um, when we really do machine learning with, the, with these big data that are supposed to be uh, generated from ETA scale experiments, but yeah. not at the moment. Okay, yeah, feel free to immediately reach out if there is. And uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to try Perlmutter yet, but uh no we are supposed to but i haven't had time <laughs> okay <laughs> so when you do yeah let me know if it if it either helps or gets worse particularly with regard to data loading and and so forth mm -hmm. okay it might, yeah, it gets better but it might not <laughs> all right cool so thanks ralph